So as Pastor Scott said, we are in, still in our sermon series, The Biblical Home. And today we're looking at the biblical child. When saying that, you may have noticed they just came in and snuck in. They're sitting with their parents. Because this is a message for and to the children today. It's going to be a bit shorter because they are shorter. <laughs> and their attention span is a little shorter. Um, but that doesn't give you adults an out. I don't want you checking out on me. Because as this message is for them about how they're supposed to respond biblically in their home to their parents, all of us are called children of God, aren't we? If we know Jesus as our Savior, we're a child of God, and our Father is in heaven. So there's a direct correlation between children loving their parents and us loving our God. Let's pray before we get into the message. Almighty God, we've come before you mindful that our children and grandchildren are a deep, precious gift. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with them and for entrusting them to us. Kind Lord, we ask that you consistently keep your hand of wisdom, guidance, patience, and love firmly, firmly upon us as we work to train up and raise up our youngsters. Each one of us has a responsibility to nurture, protect, and teach the children who are among us. We pray today that you will bless the youth with your joy as they grow into adulthood. We ask, Lord, that you grant us the grace to lead them in ways which honor your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first point in talking about the biblical child, is that they need to know that Jesus loves them. And so do their parents. In Mark 10, we find these words, that they were bringing children to him, him being Jesus, that, they, that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them that was bringing the children. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. And then in Proverbs we read, Hear, my son, your father's instructions, and forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are graceful garland around your head and pendants for your neck. Kids, your mother and father love you. Heed their words in your life. Kids, have your parents ever scooped you up into their arms and told you that they love you? They really do. And so does Jesus. Second, you are important to Jesus and his kingdom's work. Kids, you are important to Jesus and his kingdom's work here on this earth. In John 6, we read a story about Jesus feeding 5,000 people. Now the Passover feast of the Jews was at hand, lifting up his eyes then he, and seeing that a large crowd was coming towards him. Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this is... He said this as a test to him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy. 
there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they? There is, for there are so many. Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments. Then the five barley loaves left from those who had eaten. The boy gave up his lunch, trusting that Jesus would do great things with it. And he did. He fed 5,000 with a little lunch of five loaves of two fish. It's kind of unique. I, when I was looking at this, I had never really given it much attention, but the fact that they were barley loaves indicated that this little boy came from the poorer side of town. From the side of town that he probably didn't have a lot. But yet he was still trusting enough to give what he had. The upper side of town would have had wheat bread instead of barley bread. And then there were the fish. Now they were up on a hillside, quite a ways away from the Sea of Galilee, which is probably where these two fish had originated. They didn't have refrigeration, they didn't have ice for their coolers. So who really knows how good a shape these fish were in? They may have been dried. They may have been salted. Or they may have been pickled. <laughs> but Jesus used them. And this little boy was willing to give. So kids, if you're here today, remember God can use you. The important thing to remember is that you are needed. You're needed for carrying out God's work here on this earth. And you're needed to help mom and dad take care of the home. Just like the boy in the story, he couldn't have fed everyone. The boy couldn't have. But he gave what he had to Jesus. And great things happened. At your house, at home, you may not be able to mow the lawn yet or paint a room or cook a meal. But what you can do, do. Pick up your toys, make your bed. Just do what mom and dad are asking without complaining. You are important to doing God's work, and you're important to helping mom and dad do their work as well. Point number three, you have responsibility in the family. Little ones, you have responsibility in the family. That's where our scripture for today comes in, Ephesians 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. That word commandment is a pretty big word. You may not really understand it, but you may have heard it before. Commandment is one of the ten commandments. It's actually the fifth of the ten commandments. It's found in Exodus 20. Verse 12, honor your father and mother that your days may be long in the land that your Lord, 
that the Lord your God is giving you. This does mean that this promise, the first and only commandment that comes with a promise, that you'll have a long life if you do this, if you honor your mother and father. But it also means that your days will be full of God's goodness and his grace if we choose to honor and obey our mother and father. Now, honor, that's kind of a tough word for little ones to understand, too. It means to give a person the respect that is due him because of his position. I spent a lot of time in the military, and I know some of you have as well. I was an enlisted person, and as an enlisted person, when I saw an officer, I paid him respect by saluting him. I didn't know him. I may not even know his name if I couldn't read his name tag on his uniform. But because he had insignia on his shoulders that signified that he was an officer, I saluted him. I paid him respect just because of his position. Kids, in the same way, you're to honor your mother and father because they are in a position of raising you, of caring for you, of protecting you, of loving you. So you should honor mom and dad. Now to obey is to do what that person that you're honoring asks without question or complaint. That's a pretty tall order without question or complaint, especially when they get to this teenage age right down. (laughs) But there is a time and a place for everything, and questions are good. But to do it without question or complaint, and then if you have a issue or thought of why that's the appropriate time. Kids, it's your responsibility to honor and obey mom and dad. That's your job in the home. It makes life in the home a lot nicer for everyone when you honor and obey mom and dad. And the Bible tells us we have one more responsibility in regards to our parents. And that is to care for them in their old age. Whoa, what do you mean? (laughs) The Bible says, not Mike, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 5, honor widows who are truly widows. Now, wait a minute, you're changing things up. A widow and a mom, they're different. Yeah, but the verses that follow read like this. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show godliness to their own household and to make some return to their parents, for this is pleasing in the sight of God. We, we, me, I still have an adult mother. We are called to care for our parents. Yes, the church is to take care of widows. But we're to find out if she's truly a widow. God is pleased when we honor and obey our parents. And when you get old enough, and your parents get old enough to care for our parents and our grandparents. Number four. We have and are always told from a very young age, from the age of these little ones right here, to grow up, to mature, to become like adults. That's what this world tells us. The Bible tells us that as adults, we've got to become like little children. Matthew 18 At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? 
And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them. He said, truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Why is that? Because children trust. Because children have faith. Because children love. Because they believe, they hope, they have kindness. Kids keep being like that. Adults strive to be more like the children. Kids honor and obey your parents. Adults honor and obey our Father who is in heaven. I have a short video that's going to bring this more to light. Hopefully you enjoy it. In that video, he said, if you stay within the boundaries of God's word, and you're obeying your parents, you'll be protected and safe. But if you step outside of that hula hoop, that circle of protection, you'll be in trouble. And God's word is very clear in our last point to these little ones is that you can step outside of those bounds. Romans 1.28 says this, And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to, be, to a debased mind to do what they ought not be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliceness. They are gossip, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents. Foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. Kids, we don't want to be lumped into that group, do we? That's a group that we don't want to be part of. We want to stay inside of that hula hoop, inside of that circle of protection. We want to obey God. And by obeying God, we obey our parents. Let's pray and ask God to show us as parents how to love our kids in a manner that will lead them to Jesus. And ask Jesus to pour into them. Lord, we thank you for your patience with us as we work toward bringing up our children and grandchildren in ways that reflect your example. Let us continually honor you by sharing your word and your love with our children. Now please watch over, protect, and pour into these little lives that they may grow in a manner worthy of your love, and we will give you all the honor that is due you. In Jesus' name we pray.